Okay, we're going to go ahead and start on chapter six. Now, a little recap of chapter five. Winnie meets Jesse or sees Jesse in the woods, sees him drinking this water. She's thirsty, um, asked to drink it. He says, nope, can't drink it. It's dirty water. She says, well, I can drink it if I want to. And then you're supposed to finish on your own. And we find out as you're reading on your own that right when Jesse is like freaking out, what am I going to do? Ma, which is May and Miles, his brother come out. And um, when he sees that Miles is just as good looking as Jesse, he's just the, he's older and then May says, their mother says, the worst is happening at last. So I guess something that they had always expected to happen, happened, okay? And we're assuming that that's the fact that Winnie or someone from the village has found them and has found this spring. We don't know much about it, but has found this spring, okay? All right, here we go, page 16, okay? Hopefully you also filled in your character chart. On your character chart, you should have uh, May, Winnie, the man in the yellow suit, Jesse Tuck, and you could also add Miles Tuck on there as well. We don't know a lot about him except that he's the older brother. He's Jesse's brother and May's son, so that definitely needs to be one of your important facts. And we also learned an important fact that Winnie is 10. She's about to be 11 years old. And Jesse was 17 years old. So those are all important facts. Okay, here we go with chapter 6. It's on page 16. Afterward, when she thought about it, it seemed to Winnie that the next few minutes were only a blur. First, she was kneeling on the ground, insisting on a drink from the spring, and the next thing she knew, she was seized and swung through the air, open-mouthed, and found herself straddling the bouncing back of a fat old horse, with Miles and Jessie trotting along on either side, while May ran puffing ahead, dragging on the bridle. When he had often been haunted by visions of what it would be like to be kidnapped, but none of her visions had been like this with her kidnappers just as alarmed as she was herself. She had always pictured a troop of burly men with long black mustaches who would tumble her into a blanket and bear her off like a sack of potatoes while she pleaded for mercy. But instead, it was they, May Tuck and Miles and Jessie, who were pleading. Please, child, dear, dear child, don't you be scared. This was May trying to run and call back over her shoulder at the same time. We wouldn't harm you. For this were for the world. If you'd yelled or anything, this was Jesse, someone might have heard you, and, and that's too risky. And Miles said, we'll explain it soon as we're far enough away. Winnie herself was speechless. She clung to the saddle and gave herself up to the astonishing fact that though her heart was pounding and her backbone felt like a pipe full of cold run, running water, and her backbone felt like a pipe full of cold running water, her head was fiercely calm. Disconnected thoughts presented, presented themselves one by one, as if they had been waiting their turn in line. So this is what it's like to ride a horse. I was going to run away today anyway. What will they say when I'm not there for breakfast? I wish the toad could see me now. That woman is worried about me. Miles is taller than Jesse. I'd better duck if I don't want this next branch to knock me off. Okay, so she doesn't seem very stressed. Instead, she has all these like silly questions going through her head. And I think the funniest one is she wanted to run away, but she was too scared. And now look what's happening to her. Okay, last paragraph, page 16. They had come to the edge of the wood now with no sign of slowing their rapid jog. The road where it angles across the meadow was just ahead, dazzling white in the open sunlight. And there standing on the road was the man from the night before, the man in the yellow suit, his black hat on his head, discovering him, seeing his surprise, and presented at once with choices, Winnie's mind perversely went blank. Instead of crying out for help, she merely goggled at him as they fled past the spot where he stood. May Tech, was, May Tech was the only one who spoke, and the most she could offer was teaching our little girl how to ride. 
Only then did it come to Winnie that she ought to shout, wave her arms, do something, but the man had fallen away behind by that time, and she was afraid to let go of the saddle, afraid to turn around, lest she fall off the horse. In another moment it was too late. They had sped up the hill and down its other side, and the opportunity was lost. After another few minutes, the road led them to a place where off to the left a shallow stream looped near, with willows and sheltering scrubby bushes. Stop! cried May. We'll stop here. Miles and Jesse grabbed at the horse's harness and he pulled up abruptly, nearly toppling Winnie off, o- off over his neck. Lift the poor child down, May gasped, her chest heaving. We'll go catch our breath by the water and try to put things straight before we go. But the explanation once they had stumbled to the banks of the stream, came hard. May seemed embarrassed, and Miles and Jesse fidgeted, glancing at their mother uneasily. No one knew how to begin. For her part, Winnie, now that was running o- now that the running was over, began to comprehend what was happening, and with the comprehension to her throat closed and her mouth went dry as paper. This was no vision. This was real. Strangers were taking her away. They might do anything. She might never see her mother again. And then, thinking of her mother, she saw herself as small, weak, and helpless. And she began to cry. Suddenly, crushed as much by outrage as by shock, May Tuck's round face wrinkled with dismay. Dear Lord, don't cry. Please don't cry, child, she implored. We're not bad people. Truly, we're not. We had to bring you away. You'll see why in a minute. And we'll take you back just as soon as we can. Tomorrow, I promise. When May said tomorrow, Winnie's sobs turned to wails. Tomorrow? It was like being told she would be kept away forever. She wanted to go home now, at once. Rush back to the safety of the fence and her mother's voice from the window. May reached out to her and she twisted away. Her hands over her face and gave herself up to weeping. This is awful, said Jesse. Can't you do something, Ma? This poor little tad. We ought to have had put better plan than that. Had a better plan than this, said Miles. That's the truth, said May helplessly. The dear Lord knows there's been enough to think of. There's been enough time to think of one, and it had to happen sooner or later. We've been plain bone lucky. It hasn't been before. It hasn't been before now. But I never expected it to be a child. She reached distractedly into the pocket of her skirt and took out the music box, and without thinking, twisted the winding key with her trembling fingers. When the tingling little medley melody began, Winnie's sobbing slowed. She stood by the stream, her hands still over her face, and listened. Yes, it was the same music she had heard the night before. Somehow it calmed her. It was like a ribbon tying her to familiar things. She thought, when I get home, I'll tell Granny it wasn't elf music after all. She wiped her face as well. She could, she could with her wet hands and turned to May. That's the music I heard last night, she managed between recovering snuffles. When I was out in my yard, my Granny said it was elves. Dear me, no, said May, peering at her hopefully. It's only my music box. I didn't suppose anyone could hear it. She held it out to Winnie. Do you want to take a look at it? So that music that Winnie's grandmother had heard since she was a little girl is actually May Tech's music box. So May has been walking in those woods next to the foster house for years and years and years. Okay, we are on um, the one, two, three... Or we're on the fifth paragraph on page 18, where it says, it's pretty. It's pretty, said Winnie, taking the little box and turning it over in her hands. The winding key was still revolving, but more and more slowly. The melody faltered. Another few widely spaced notes clicked, and then it stopped. Wind it up if you want to, said May, clockwise. Winnie turned the key. It clicked faintly. And then, after several more turns, the music began to play again. Brisk from its fresh winding and merry, no one who owned a thing like this could be too disagreeable. Winnie examined the painted roses and lilies of the valley and smiled in spite of herself. It's pretty, she repeated. 
handing it back to May. The music box had relaxed, relaxed them all. Miles dragged a handkerchief from a, from a back pocket and mopped at his face, and May sank down heavily on a rock, pulling off the blue straw hat and fanning herself with it. Look here, Winnie Foster, said Jesse. We're friends. We really are. But you got to help us. Come sit down and we'll try to tell you why. Okay, wow. So, so much happened in that little bitty chapter. What I want you to do is um, something big happened in that chapter. They ran into another character. They ran into... Um, the man in the yellow suit. They didn't really say anything. Winnie didn't say anything. That was her one chance. If she wanted to get away, she could have yelled at him. So I want you to write um, a different ending, okay? So I want you to start where they're walking by the man in the yellow suit, but Winnie's going to say something to him. It could be bad, like it could be, oh my gosh, help me. Or it could be, hi, how are you? Good day. And she could play like she's part of the family. But I want you to write a new ending to that chapter. Okay? You have to do something else with the man in the yellow suit. So write something that you would say or do to him. And then write a different ending. Okay? To where they don't just end up by a stream and talking and they're friendly with the music box. Okay? Um, it needs to be at least five sentences. Okay, I'd prefer it to be over seven. And you just have to have a different thing happen. Okay, so because she chose not to say anything to the man in the yellow suit, they went to the stream. She learned about the elves and the music and she got calmed down. But I want you to do something else. So be creative, at least five sentences, but I would really prefer it to be over seven and um, do something fun. Do something that's going to make me laugh or something that's super suspenseful. Um, you're going to do that on notebook paper. And when you're done, go ahead and turn it in. Okay. And one other thing that I want you to do with your story, I want you to use at least one of your vocab words from your Dictionary Detective chapters four through nine, I want you to use at least one of those words and you must use it correctly, okay? And in your story, I want you to make sure that you highlight where you use the word and somewhere on your paper, I would prefer down at the bottom, you need to write that definition of that word, okay? So this is gonna be part of your grade two. Use one of your Dictionary Detective words from chapters four through nine. You need to highlight the word in your story, and you need to make sure the definition for that word is on the bottom of your page of your story.